All right, so we're gonna get started. So, hey everyone, uh, my name's Alan. I'm your programming captain. We've got Shubon, Nissen, and Ronick as your programming directors. And today we're gonna give you a pretty uh, comprehensive overview of the programming sub team just to get everyone acclimated with it. So, here's just a quick overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. So, we're gonna talk about you know the programming sub team in general. We're gonna talk about how everything works. We're gonna talk about what we code, how you guys can get started if you're interested in programming and some logistics about foundations. So the programming sub team as a whole is just responsible for managing all of robot code, right? So we write everything that the robot does needs to do in both teleop and autonomous, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And so we write code for all different parts of the robot, which includes the controllers that we use on the robot to actually drive the robot and operate it, as well as the different sensors on a robot. And we also work with other sub teams like the strategy sub team, which we'll talk about, and also with you know the drivers and operators just to sort of have coherence among the robot branch as a whole. All right, so I'll let Ronick take it away. All right, so how does it all work? So um, uh, the breakdown of an FRC match, there are basically two main parts of it. So the first 15 seconds is completely autonomous, followed by a two minute and 15 second teleoperated period. So the drivers can grab their controllers and start manually controlling the robot. So programming plays an important role in both parts of this competition. Since the autonomous part requires zero driver input, we directly command the robot to move and actuate different subsystems based on our code. And depending on our robot and the competition, we create different autonomous paths for the robot to follow uh, with the strategy sub team to ensure that we have the most viable path for the robot to follow. And during the teleoperated period, drivers use our controllers and command the robot themselves. So even though uh, everything is through the controller, there's still a lot, of man a lot to manage in terms of programming. Uh, things like camera vision, sensor input, and ensuring all that all motors are operating at the correct profile are things that we need to uh, make sure that uh, we're managing in the code. And for, as an example, this in our new off-season robot, things like the limelight and uh, the sensors on the motors of our drive train and the beam brake is essential to manage in our code so that we know if we have a ball in our robot and all the things that we have to manage, uh, we manage throughout the code in our robot. So here's an example of a teleop, um, and this was in Houston. So after the bell rings, wait. so as you can see, the robots are all moving right now. This is autonomous period right now, and once the bell rings that's the sign of the teleop period starting and you can also see the timer up there so now the teleop period has started and the drivers are controlling the robots through uh through the controllers at the driver stations as you can see um yeah so that's all that's happening in teleop next slide and uh Here's an example of an autonomous video. So uh, in, this, in, in this auton, um, if it plays, yeah. So we'll, here we pick up two balls and then we shoot them. And then once we shoot them, we uh, go and take two enemy balls and we place them somewhere else so that way it, uh, it makes it harder for the other team to get the balls when teleop period starts. Okay, so when we're coding an FRC robot, there's two languages that are primarily used, Java and C++. But since mo almost all the computer science classes in our district consist of teaching Java, that's what we use in our team. But Java is just the syntax for actual FRC programming. The way the bulk of the programming is, it consists of understanding how the library that we use called WPI Lib works. WPI Lib is a library created by Worcester Polytechnic Institute. And at these this library has various different methods and classes that allow us to control motors, 
uh, control the line line and like basically code and build the subsystem commands of our robot. And understanding how these de different methods work and connect together is key in being able to successfully code a good FRC robot. Um, in the link below, you can find a documentation for how to download WPILIB, but um, this will all be posted in a more nuanced Discord post with all the relevant links and information. Right, so GitHub. An important part of the programming sub team is keeping track of the progress that we make with our code. So we use GitHub, which you can think of as a Google Drive that is designated for code. GitHub is a very powerful tool that allows you to see your progression in code over time. So in case anything goes wrong, it's easily it's easy to go back to a previous version. We use GitHub each time we write code to ensure that our code is correctly stored and everybody in the team has access to it. And now the driver station. So the driver station is basically the bridge between the code and the robot. The driver station also allows uh, us to see if we're connected to the robot. And we usually connect through Wi-Fi or the robot's radio. The controllers that are connected to the laptop and it also uh, allows us to enable and disable the robot too. Once you build code and upload it to the robot, the driver station gives you the confirmation that the robot code is compiled and ready to be used on the robot. Once we uh, verify this, we enable the robot and we can test our code. The driver station also allows you to easily test your robot in Auton uh, mode by switching it from Teleop to Auton in one of the menus. And what's our programming build season gonna look like? Here's a typical outline for how we code our robots during the build season. So first, we prototype ideas with other sub teams. There's no coding really, but just coming in to experiment different ideas. And we, during this time, we usually prepare our laptops and GitHub for the new season uh, during this time. By the end of week two, or sometimes even before, we usually have our drivetrain uh, choice locked in. From there, we can start coding the drivetrain. Depending on how fast our different subteams are built, uh, we write code, we start writing code for them during weeks three through six. During this time, we can also begin planning out our autumn plans. We continue to work with our subteams, subsystems, and uh, begin working with drivers to optimize our code for controller input. We also begin coding different Auton paths too. Okay, so now I want to take the time to just talk about what exactly you can expect to code on an FRC robot because we've got all these different parts on the robot and so I just want to boil it down to like the really the main components that we sort of deal with when we're working with code at least. So the first thing that I really want to differentiate is the idea of a subsystem and then the idea of a command. So a subsystem and a command, they're just general things that we code on a robot. So a subsystem is essentially a specific part of the robot, whether it's the drive base, um, a shooter, or a climber, in our case for the 2022 thing. And in a subsystem, we tell the code what motors we have, how we choose to control them, and then we write methods to control them as necessary. And then a command essentially just takes a subsystem and then uses the methods that we write in the subsystem to control it. So they're better than just calling the, you know, just calling specific methods in a subsystem because you can directly reference them when you use a controller. And then with one command, you can actually control more than one subsystem. So for example, if we wanted to shoot a ball, we need to run two subsystems for that. We need to run the conveyor, we need to, or actually more than two, the conveyor, the shooter, and the hood to line up the shot. So that's three different subsystems that we run in one command. So you can think of a subsystem as like the thing on the robot and then the command essentially tells the thing what to do. And then usually in FRC, we deal with two main motors, although this year we've been trending towards just one main motor. Um, so we usually work with Falcon 500s and Rev Neo motors, although we really hate Rev Neo motors and we don't use them. Um, both of them are controlled in really similar manners. It's just a matter of, you know, the syntax that they use to actually control them. And even though they have slightly different code, again, the concepts are the same. And 
really the main importance with emoters are the sensors that we use, which are called encoders. And so the encoders are just the sensors on the motor. And then the sensors are essentially a way of actually controlling the motor in an intelligent way and controlling it so that we can control it to move in a precise manner. And we can also use encoders to see how much a motor has moved in terms of like a distance. And we can get how we can figure out how fast the motor is moving, which is pretty essential, especially with um, a game where we need to shoot balls. We've also got a variety of sensors that we deal with. Um, a big one for this off-season robot has been the limelight, which allows us to track different targets using retroreflective tape that you can find around the main hub that the robot shoots balls into. And we also have a pigeon IMU, which is effectively like a gyro sensor if you're coming from something like FLL, for example, and you've worked with gyro sensors before. And the sensor is pretty much essential for autonomous to ensure our robots making precise turns and facing the right direction. We also have these beam brake sensors that we use, which is kind of very similar to the sensors that you'll find on your garage door at the bottom. And they essentially project a beam and based on whether the beam is broken, we can uh, get certain information from it. So because in this year's FRC game, you're only allowed to hold two balls in a robot, we use two beam breaks and that essentially tells us the number of balls in a robot or an, at any given moment. And we also have color sensors that we might consider working with in the future. It basically allows us to detect color. And we actually did plan on using it to detect red balls versus blue balls this year. And um, we're hoping we could continue something along those lines for uh, the upcoming season. Okay, so after we finish programming our subsystems and commands, we map out our controllers so we can perform certain commands based on a certain input that's given by the controller. So WPI Lib has its own joystick class that allows us to run commands and basically map them onto certain buttons as Alan mentioned before. And um, WPI Lib also allows us to consider nuance when we use buttons, so either holding it or tapping it. We have different methods to map different commands based on whether we hold a button or whether we tap it, which is um, really cool and essential for both the driver and operator. So the Xbox controller is primarily what the driver would use, and the PS4 controller is what an operator would use. And here is a link to a video where um, you can learn how to download certain the necessary software, such as Visual Studio Code, GitHub, and WPilot. 